today we're going to be upgrading the brakes in the Mini once again. We'll be doing the stainless steel brake lines and we will also be doing some very simple front brake ducts. So this is just a set of stainless steel lines. It's got all the little factory hardware in here like this little rubber hanger that keeps the line in place. And it's got all the correct little hardware to mount it. Now it is different. They changed the Mini so starting at the end of 03. The way the caliper bolted to the hose was changed. I think specifically in the rear. So if you have an 02 or an early 03, double check that you've got the correct brake lines. And for the later ones, all the way up to like the 2008 ones in the convertible, it's going to be the same. So everything should line up well. It does come with a little bit of constructions. I mean, I'm not overly concerned. It's just really simple. Unbolt everything and bolt everything back in. So we don't really need instructions, but it's always nice to have. So I've got the car jacked up. All four wheels are off and I've already got it started on loosening up the brake lines. Of course, spray everything with penetrating oil as soon as you take the wheel off to give it some time to soak in. So hopefully you can see that we have already broken loose the first brake line. What you're breaking loose is this up here. You're going to need an 11 millimeter wrench and then to hold this bottom one, which is the hose, make sure it doesn't move. You're going to need a 17 millimeter wrench. So hold this one in place with a regular box wrench and then you're going to want to use a flare nut wrench on the top. So 17 millimeter box wrench, just nice and normal. But then your flare nut is going to look like this. So it's going to wrap all the way around the nut on all five sides, leaving just that one side exposed as safe as we possibly can be to not strip it. Because if you strip this, of course, you're going to have to reflare the brake line and that's going to be a huge job. So we're going to go ahead and loosen that up and get this brake line off. We'll have to disconnect it from the rotor in the back over here. And of course, you're going to have to leave some sort of pan underneath it because it will continue to leak brake fluid. You can put a cup under it, something just to keep it from leaking all over the place because we are going to have a pretty hefty brake bleeding job by the time we're done with this. Here is the original front brake line and here is the one that's going to be replacing it. Obviously these look nice and new. It's stainless steel covered in this little plastic coating so it should be very very well protected from any sort of road debris or abrasion or whatever might happen over the life of the brake line. And of course it is supposed to help with brake feel. Of course the biggest benefit of that is going to be the fact that these are just brand new brake lines. It's got the same little rubber area here so that it can be held in place by the bracket. And like I said, you're going to be holding this still with a 17 millimeter wrench and then you're using your 11 millimeter flare nut wrench to wind the fitting out so you can move the hard line and then pop this out of its fitting. Now on the other side you have a banjo bolt fitting and a couple of copper washers. You do get replacement copper washers and a replacement banjo bolt. It's slightly different. They're the same exact thread pitch. It's just a little bit of a different bolt but same idea of course. Now the only thing that you're going to have to know that might make things a little bit easier this is 17 millimeters, but this is 11 sixteenths, which comes out to about 17.5 millimeters. So you will have to switch wrenches when you're reinstalling the new one. Other than that, they're the same exact line. Now for the banjo bolts, this is an 11 millimeter head and this is a 14 millimeter head. So just so you know. Now, of course, you already have your 11 millimeter flare nut wrench out. You'll need a 14 millimeter flare nut wrench. A, you can use it on the banjo bolt and B, you can use it on the rear factory piece and the Technofit piece when you're putting these into the rear caliper. It's a little bit of a different design so this twists directly into the caliper. It doesn't use a banjo bolt like the front does. So that was the switch in 03s. They switched from a banjo in the rear to this screw in type. But it's 14 millimeters either way so factory piece or the aftermarket one. That's going to be the same thing. Of course, rubber little grommet again to hold it in place, and this is going to again be 11 16 while that one is 17 millimeter. Other than that, everything else is the same. They look like a great quality piece. Like I said, I already installed it on the driver's side, and everything went in perfectly. No issues. The lengths are exactly the same. It fit in perfectly. These little grommets work perfectly. So I'm really impressed with it so far. I don't know if I mentioned it already, but this is a Technofit kit. I already have stop tech stainless steel lines on my 350Z, so I wanted to try something different this time, just to you know try some different companies out. And so far, I'm really impressed. It's got these nice little rubber areas here to help with that whip test, which is very difficult to pass. So the quality on it looks perfect. It's got everything I need to install it. So I'll go show you a few things on the passenger side when we go to install those, and then we will get to bleeding our brakes. So right here on the back bottom side of the caliper is where that factory brake line screws in. Again, you're gonna need a 14 
16 millimeter flare nut wrench to get that undone just to make sure you don't strip it when putting it back in you just want to make it nice and snug don't over tighten it you might break the fitting off inside the caliper and you're going to have a really bad day and of course it's 14 millimeters on the new piece as well so you'll be able to use the same wrench and then right back here in the center of the shot you can see where that brake line connects to the hard line on the car Again, 11 millimeter nut on the hardline side and 17 millimeter wrench on the factory piece and then the 11 16 on the aftermarket one. Looking at it from the side of the vehicle, we have a sensor in the way. So if you pop this brake wear sensor out of this little bracket, the brake line is sitting right behind it. So it's a lot easier to get to. You can also get the wrenches down from the underside of a car, whatever you think is easier. So I'm going to go ahead and undo those. Just make sure that you're holding this 17 millimeter nice in place and gently backing out the 11 millimeter over here. As that backs out, this little clip right here that's holding pressure on it will release and it'll get easier and easier to turn. The passenger side took me all of about 10-15 minutes and went super smoothly. So I'm going to go ahead and do this other side. Of course, you're going to want to put some sort of bucket or catch pan underneath this to keep all the brake fluid from staining your driveway. But as soon as we have those last two done, we will move on to bleeding the brakes and we'll see how it helps our brake feel. So a few different pieces of advice I picked up as I went ahead and installed these. Go ahead and undo the end that is attached to the hard line on the car on the rear first. Once you undo the hard line, you can then break loose the part that's attached to the caliper, spin the whole hose to undo it from the caliper because this does not spin. If you try to undo this with a wrench, it'll twist and spin the hose, which is fine if you tear up the factory hose tearing it out, but you cannot tear up the new one putting it in, obviously. So twist this whole hose out like a screwdriver and twist the new one in like you're using a screwdriver and then tighten it down with the flare nut wrench and then reattach it to the hard line last. So hard line first, detach, attach the new one and then mount back to the hard line so that that way you can get this nice and tight and proper and you're not going to have any sort of twist in the hose. Another thing, definitely wear gloves. Brake fluid is highly corrosive, it'll mess up your paint, and it's not good for your skin. So try to wear gloves if you have them. When you're done, wash everything down with water because it'll just wash off any brake fluid that you got splashed somewhere or you touch something with brake fluid on your hands. You're going to get brake fluid places. Just wash it all down with water and it'll wash it away. And then lastly, these banjo bolts are hollow. So there is a hole down the bolt and it comes out the side through the fitting. So these are hollow, so don't over tighten them. This kit is recommended for 12 to 14 foot pounds, and then to convert it to inch pounds, just multiply it by 12. So I tightened it down to 144 inch pounds because my torque wrench does not go that low. So I had to use my quarter inch drive one, which is in inch pounds. So got everything tightened down. Everything went on perfectly. I have no complaints at this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in our new brake fluid, same brake fluid we used before, that Prestone Dot 4 and I'll let you guys know how it feels when we take it on the drive. Now that we're done installing all the brake lines, we're gonna do some very simple brake ducting, very similar to what was on the E39. Any sort of thin wall three inch tubing is gonna work. Plastic would be preferable, but I couldn't find any and I didn't feel like ordering it. I just wanted to go ahead and get this done. And honestly, this worked super, super well on the driver's side. So you can pick this up at Home Depot. It's got this little seam so it comes open and you have to seal it up, but it was super easy just to snap it into place. I've got some of this little mesh here that I'm going to use to cover up the opening. A, it makes it look like it's factory, and B, it's going to keep crap from flying through the tubing and into your wheel well. And then you'll need some sort of screw to attach it. I've just got some simple self-tapping screws, and that'll get it all done. We're going to be reusing the fog light housing, so you're going to have to basically dismantle and destroy your fog light. You can always buy blanking plates. They're $20 a piece. I am never going to go back to fog lights, so I went ahead and disassembled mine. The biggest issues getting the glass out but I'll show you guys that in just a second but this for a whole tube you're only going to need to use about half of it I've already used seven inches of it I'll use seven more and it will be done this was less than five bucks this was part of a trash can but you can get mesh like this at Home Depot and sheets for pretty cheap and then just a few screws that you probably already have so it's going to be a super super cheap mod even if you buy the two blanking plates that are for people who did not get fog lights on their car they're only twenty dollars a piece so at most this should cost you fifty dollars and at the least it should cost you less than 10. So we'll go over to the passenger side wheel well and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. Here's a glimpse of what the finished product looks like. So you can see the tube is perfectly flush with this right here. I used a three and a half inch hole saw to make this little hole. 
and it lines up almost perfectly. So all the air is going to come from the front bumper into the wheel well, almost in the same exact spot it did on the E39. And it should be directed almost directly at the back of this caliper once the weight is under a car and the caliper comes up a little bit. It'll be floating around right back here. And it should do a really great job of keeping our front brakes cool when we're at the track. And here on the front side, you can see how good it looks. You can see that wire mesh right there. It looks very factory. It's not the same exact design as the one in the grill, but it's pretty close. And you can see this has already got kind of like a cone shape to it. So it is going to funnel some air in there even better than it would if it was just a flat bumper. Unfortunately, over here on the passenger side, we're missing this big chunk of our wheel well liner. So eventually I might have to buy a new one. The problem is it is this whole wheel well liner is one piece. The 350Z has a front and a rear, but on this one, it's all connected throughout the top. But you do not have to take the whole thing out. You just have to disconnect the rivet that's here, one that's here. There should be one in this area. It's not. There's one up here behind the blinker. You've got one over here by the strut. And if you take all of those out, you can bend this front section back and tuck it behind the rotor and it'll be out of your way. There's also a screw straight up here that you might have to take out. So you might have to take this one out, but you can pull it out of your way and you can do all your work right here. I can even already see the fog light just a little bit tucked right back there. So we're going to take the fog light out and I will show you guys what we got to do to it. So here is your factory fog light. As you can see, you have the adjuster up here. You've got the lens mechanism back here, and then we have a, believe it or not, a glass lens. I've actually never seen a factory light with a glass lens in it in a modern car, so that was interesting. But what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to remove this screw right here for the adjuster, and then there's three little clips around the perimeter. You're going to have to pry those out, and this whole piece will come out here. It'll look just like this. So you can take this out, which is holding your lens and your reflector, and then after that, getting the lens out, this whole thing, imagine almost like a windshield or any sort of fixed window, it's sealed all in here. So getting it out is kind of difficult. I basically had to destroy it on the other side. Like I said before, if you do not want to destroy this and you want to keep this for later, you can always buy a block off plate. It just looks exactly like this, but it's black plastic and you can drill a hole in it with your hole saw and you can do the same exact thing and bolt it in using these factory mounting points. It only uses three of these holes. I don't know why there's four, but both sides only used three. So I'm gonna get this disassembled and ready to go and then we will start cutting some of the uh, piping. So at this point, you should have a housing that is completely empty, no more light, no more lens. Of course, be careful getting all the glass out and make sure you don't cut yourself. You know, wear gloves or whatever you gotta do. But I'm going to use these tin snips and some of our mesh here. I'm just going to lay it over and cut it so that I can fold it down over the edge. So I'll do several different relief cuts all the way around and be folding it down over the edges. I'll cut off an excess if the piece is too long. And then using the self-tapping screws on four different sides, we'll be folding it down, holding it in place. Those same self-tapping screws will eventually get backed out when we slide our pipe in and they will hold the pipe in as well as holding the mesh on. So two for one. And here is our duct with our mesh attached. So we've got four screws all the way around holding it down. If you fold it down right, you should be able to fold down the one that's in the very middle between the two screws and then the next one's on top of that. And then the ones on the screws will hold it down. So it should be held down pretty tight all the way around. Of course, there's multiple different ways you could do this. You could glue it in place with some sort of sealant, similar to what holds down a windshield. Whatever you have and however you want to do it, whatever you think looks good. But this is our finished product as far as the duct goes. Now what you're going to need is you're going to need your tubing. Cut off, I would say, at least a 7 inch long section and then tie it in here. And what we're going to do is slide it into the housing and then a couple of these different screws are going to hold it into place. And we might add one more in this little hole back here that I believe was for drainage on the original housing. And with that, we're one step closer. So we now have the ducting on the back of our duct. So we were going to go install this in the car and we will measure to figure out where we need to cut the hole in the liner. And then from there, we can trace around the liner because it's going to be cut at an angle. So we want it nice and flush just for a clean look and we want to make sure it's not out where it can hit the tire. So we'll go install this in its place. We'll do a little test fit, do some measuring, but we are almost done. So to figure out where we want to drill into the liner, we're going to measure off of this point here 
and this point here because that has the same exact spot on the liner. So that is where this here goes to that top one and this here goes to the one on the left or towards the center of the car. So we're gonna measure from those two points to see where the pipe ends and then we'll be able to put a point on here and drill a hole. So measuring from that top point down to the top of the pipe, it was four and a quarter inches, but I know that the pipe is three inches in diameter, so I have to have an inch and a half to that. So it is five and three quarters of an inch down from this hole and it's four inches from this point over to the center line of the pipe. We'll be using a three and a half inch hole saw because A, that'll give us a little bit of wiggle room and B, I already had a three and a half inch hole saw and I do not have a three inch hole saw. So we'll go ahead and drill that hole and test fit it on the car. So you can see what I'm talking about having this stick through here. So what we're gonna do is take a Sharpie and we'll go around the edge and that way we know exactly where we wanna cut once we get it back off the car and, and it should fit nice and flush. So we'll take that back off and the next time we put it on it'll be on for good we'll be able to bolt everything back up and get the wheel well liner perfectly in place and then we will be done we'll be able to put it back on the car and see how much better our brakes feel with, with these brand new stainless steel lines and here we have it just like the driver's side so it looks good on front and nice and flush on the back perfectly in line with the wheel well liner so it's not going to interfere with the wheel at all and it really should add a lot of good cool air to the wheel well so right through this front area into the wheel well right on the back of the caliper and the rotor right there so really i do think these are going to work extremely well and give us a nice little safety margin at the track or on the country road so now let's get the car on the ground and we can test out those brakes and for those of you who are wondering this is what the view through the brake duct looks like so you can see just there on the bottom left the banjo bolt for the brake caliper so the caliper is right there in line and a lot of it's going to smack into the axle and it should get turbulent right there and hopefully get sucked in by the veins of the rotor. So we'll come back a little bit, and right here you can see the mesh. But yeah, right through that, it should go right to where we need it to. It's not gonna be as perfect as if it was attached directly to the back of the rotor, but it should do us a lot of good on track. We have our new brake lines put in. Everything has been bled and is ready to go. I gotta say, as soon as I got in the car, the brake pedal felt a lot better, even in just basic slow stops. Uh, it's kind of hard to do a back-to-back -back comparison because even changing it out quickly, I'm still going to have about an hour minimum in between the last two times I touched a brake pedal. So it's going to feel a little bit different. It's hard for me to compare exactly, but we're going to go ahead and do the same thing we did last time where I'm going to do second gear all the way to the top of second and then do an emergency stop and we'll see how the pedal feels. feels a lot better. I mean, it's not like night and day or anything like that, but it is a much firmer pedal feel. I've got a lot more confidence and more feedback through the pedal. Not all of that is from the fact that they're stainless steel brake lines. A lot of that is probably just from the fact that they are 14 years newer. So we have brand new lines. Everything is bled with new fluid. So I'm really happy with our setup on our car. We have those brake ducts. We have stainless steel brake lines. We have nice dot four fluid. We have stop tech sport pads and we have their blank rotors. So really we have a pretty good setup on our brakes. I think it's gonna do really well on track. Um, it's nothing crazy or over dramatic like a Brembo big brake kit, but I do think is really gonna help in our performance driving. So of course, if you guys have any questions about my brake setup or how I like it, and of course I'm gonna review it once we get it out on track and at some autocrosses, go ahead, drop those questions below, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys next week.